All right, I'm just going to go ahead and make the video. I've been putting it off. Um, this is in response to the Gamma Quadro, the Wayfarers, or the SFP and TJ Quadro video. Um, I've been putting it off because, A, I didn't really want to talk about it. That's one of the nice things about FI Trickster is unless I'm like near somebody and actually like absorbing their FI and being around their feelings, I can just shut them off and I don't really give a fuck about your piddly feelings. And that's kind of a, a nice thing. That's why ENTPs, when they are in a situation where they don't want to be in, they'll go way far away. And all of a sudden, it's kind of interesting. Which is interesting that they call that quadro Wayfarers because I can't seem to find somebody in that quadro that wants to travel on a regular basis. And it, that it never will because it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, to that quadra especially we'll start with sfps sfps every sfp a friend i have is still living in the hometown they grew up in or at least something they're familiar with from their childhood and they like that contentment and that stability of finding that you know this is why you see sfp isfp farmers you know like 10th generation or whatever you know and they're still doing the same thing they know and they don't really look beyond what is and so I don't see them as wayfarers. I see if they are traveling around, it's because they have no other choice. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, go to STJs. They rely on physical memories for everything. They all live in the same town I grew up in. I'm, I remember my ISTJ uh, best friend, one of them, he, he hated the idea of moving again because he was a foster kid. And you know, he finally had stability there in Tennessee and knew where everything was, you know, and you feel safe and secure that way. And especially if you got no SI, you know, to navigate your way through life because that's the navigators are the SI users. I'm assuming probably ISTJs are the best navigators, um, maybe ISFJ. Uh, but yeah, I don't see them as traveling around in that sense. And then, so then there was all the whining on Facebook and people getting all upset. And first, I felt bad for them, even though I knew it was going to happen because I, I, FI child, I argue, is the most sensitive of all feelings. Um, and it, it wasn't too shocking. I remember watching like nine minutes of the video and I was like, this is going to cause a bunch of sh shit storm of people complaining because there's already a ton of I, INTJs in the group already anti-chase as it is um I mean, they're still in the group but they just talk shit it's kind of weird um uh to go along with that then i felt bad so i said i was gonna make a video about positivity of them and then it kept whining and then chase made an apology video and then i was like well do i still need to do this and and he didn't really apologize. You get to understand through an ENTP, ENTP's mind. Um, every video Chase makes, I mean, he's never said this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it for him, is connected in one say, shape or form to him. And so when you see everything you've done and this huge net of past experiences and past, you know, productions or whatever, you know, they're all connected and so he can make a video that's 100% negative, 100% stereotype, and you guys should be okay with that because he's made a myriad of other videos that aren't, that are very positive. And, but again, this is where that comes back into how we, the ego bias and how we view the world, you know, um, through our lens and how we think. And so I always thought that too. And I was just like, well, he did make these videos, these video videos. I think people are overreacting. And, but to be fair, I said this in the comments in one of the, the posts was, um, when you're a YouTuber, um, you can't always do this, especially if you're doing like a classroom type format, like CS Joseph's YouTube is, um, you have to understand that sometimes your first viewer will be any video. You know, especially ones of, the, of this quadra, and they're like, hey, I'm an ENTJ, and it's my first time getting into MBTI, and he clicks on this, and you're a gold digger, you're a, a fucking pirate, and you need to go to hell and die, you know? Uh, it's like, whoa, you know, this guy's crazy. and But he never saw the other videos which collaborated it. Uh, 
and so that's my thoughts on that. Um, to more to go along with it, um, I think there comes a, a sort of a form of responsibility with all of us um, as an ENTP. I have to accept that I have the potential to be like Kanye West and be in the Oval Office cussing and not understanding where I am and saying a bunch of stupid shit that I shouldn't be and constantly, you know, being a, a scene due to my, you know, inappropriate behavior. I have to accept that I have the potential to do that. Okay, I have to accept in my quadra, especially because ISFJ is part of my line, my 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 aspiration, my part of my mind, uh, that what if there was a Nazi takeover in my country and um, I was told to follow orders? Would I? You know? And would I be a, a good soldier and follow orders and, you know, and kill innocent people because they didn't follow the ideology that I adhere to? You know, I have to accept that I have the potential to do that. And, you know, then you had the other quadra complaining about book burning. Do I want to destroy knowledge that I don't like? Um, I think that's one of the biggest insults CS Joseph has ever said. And I have to accept that, yes, I have the potential to be like that. You know, um, almost feel like when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I was like that, you know, a book burner. And if I was in that religion still and I was still brainwashed and indoctrinated, they asked me to burn certain things or to get rid of certain things on the internet, I definitely would have followed orders and I would have done it. Um, and so I have to accept that. So anybody of this quadra has to accept that they have the potential to be like this quadra in itself. And so if you don't want to be called gold diggers, you want to be called shallow, you don't want to be called, you know, decadent, pirate, you know, you know, I'm sorry. All you have to do is turn on the TV and you see decadent ESFPs, decadent ISFPs, decadent ENTJs, decadent INTJs on television talking about shallow shit, talking about getting a lot of money, making fun of poor people, you know, things like this on a regular basis. You have the simple life, you have keeping up with the Kardashians, you had the, you had the, um, the apprentice, you know, um, you have politicians who are INTJs, you got Mark Zuckerberg INTJ calling people dumb motherfuckers, you know, you guys should know better, you're stupid as hell, they give me all this information for me to sell it, you know, he's an INTJ and that's that's the way he thinks and that's why, how he treats other people. And so everybody has to look at the quadrant and realize, hey, I have the potential to be that way. I have the potential to be like Donald Trump. I have the potential to be like um, uh, Kim Kardashian. I have the potential to be like, uh, you know, AOC. I have the potential to be like Pamela Anderson. I have the potential to be like that, uh, whether you like them or not. And the thing about it is, is we like to judge other people based on our perspective of life and our opportunities presented to us. And let's just face it, yeah, there are 16 types, but each 16 was born in a different situation. And so you can say, hey, I'm not like Paris Hilton. She's a, you know, a spoiled, dirty whore. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, but did you grow up in that environment where you literally had infinite money and nothing to do other than the party? And you're an ESFP. What would you have done? at that young age and then you're like hey you want to make a tv show we're going to record you and make a sex tape and all this other crap you know i think majority of esps i know if they were put in that position yes they would have followed suit um so you have to accept that if it's happening in your quadrant it could happen to you uh, that's the whole point of this education and the whole point of us following C.S. Joseph, following other people like that, Dr. John Beebe, uh, Dr. Linda Behrens, and things like that, so we can see what we, how we want to mold ourselves, how we want to mold our children, how we want to mold our loved ones. You know, this is the whole point. And so you have to accept the good with the bad. And so let me give a few uh, pointers on my experience with each type um, well, let me first get this out of the way. I consider this like the dad quadra. And I see this quadra quite often getting involved in being workaholics and providing for their loved ones in a way that might seem, uh, 
not not the best way to do it, I guess. I can't think of the word. I'm sorry. I sound like fumbling momently and I just woke up. But uh, this comes to play many times you see ISFPs or ESFP fathers who were just working, you know, busting their ass trying to provide for their family and then also their kids are grown and they have no relationship with them and they're really upset with that, you know, or you have ENTJs or INTJs in the same type of boat, you know, high CEOs or politicians and they don't know their kids and this happens quite often, you know, and is that selfish of them to do that? I mean, some would say, no, they're just providing for their family, you know? And so to find that balance is kind of hard yeah, for all of us, you know? It's so like my quadra might have a hard time being nice to their family because they're nice to everybody else first and they get back and they're so drained and burned out, they don't want to fucking deal with anybody. You know, that's something my, my um, quadra does. And is that selfish? I was helping other people, but... My focus should be my immediate family, but I was focusing on helping everybody else in the congregation, everyone else in church, because my F.E. child's like, hey, I can help you. Yeah, no problem, you know, and then I get back at home and I'm just too tired, you know, to help help my own people who actually love me, who actually care about me. You know, the same case to be this uh, for everybody. And so... Uh, a couple things I really like about this quadra people need to also understand is they're, they're one-track mind people. This is really goes across to every NI user, in my opinion. You guys are not multitaskers. You might think you are. You're not, you know, and it's – and then my type, you know, ENTPs or ENFPs, for instance, are two multitaskers, and we have a hard time, you know, single tasking. And so that could be a, a different problem. But um, – and so when you think of young – ESFPs, young ISFPs, think of young ENTJs, young INTJs, and you talk to every single one of them, you know, they kind of have a one-track mind of different kind of goals and NIs they want to do, and uh, this could come across as other people as very selfish because they're so focused, NI users are focused, and so other people are like, oh, you're just thinking about yourself, you want to do this job only, you don't want to do it, you know, and they don't understand that this quadra learns things through TE. And so if you're, they are open for criticism in that sense, if you're in a relationship with them, because otherwise they're going to do the NI thing and they're just going to go, Hey, I need to do this job. I need to do this job. I got to do this errand. You know, I got to say this to this person, you know, one thing at a time. And if you distract them while they're doing their one thing at a time, it really just crumples their whole entire world, which is actually quite fun to do every once in a while, you know, um, and so if you are a person who's complaining about this quadrant in your life being selfish and you don't give them information that what pisses you off and what you consider selfish and you just ignore it because you're afraid to hurt their feelings like most FE users are, you know, that's, that's still on you because they can't change their direction without data. And so they need to be told that, you know, and so that's, that's a, it's a big issue and why people can say they come across as selfish or their one track mind. Um, you know, a lot of people judge like younger people of this quadra as like just trying to get girls or just trying to get boys and a real study at the, in the clubs, you know, and things like that. And well, at that age, you know, people are typically a lot more horny, you know, and that's what they want. And that's what they want to get at that moment in time. But they're not like that 24 seven. And so just because you found somebody you know, in that four hour time span where they're, you know, trying to, you know, get laid, that doesn't mean that's not all that all they are. And so talking about different people in this quadra who I've really appreciated, my father is an ESFP and I won't go into dirt because I talked a lot of negative things about him in my last video, trying to praise him because he's had a real hard life. But, um, let me give you a short sentence. The story is when he was 26, his first wife left him with five kids. And he raised five kids by himself. You know, for 10 years until he met my mother, who's an ISFJ. You know, and they got married and his life got a lot more stable after that. But he, you know, this is a very moral quadra. 
you know, he didn't want the kids to be separated in between the two parents. And so he said, no, I'll just take them all. I want them all. Such and such. I'll work. You know, I'll provide babysitting. I'll provide this kind of stuff. And he just worked 12 hours a day, essentially, to provide this thing. Now, was that the best, most ideal thing? In hindsight, you can't really judge him based on that. But at the moment, it made sense. Um it probably would have been better, you know, to split them up in all honesty, just so they could have had more of a balanced life and he didn't have to work so much. Um, but, you know, that's that's a moral conviction they have. I'm trying to think about different, how many ISFPs I know whose father or mother died or abandoned their family and they stood up and took the adult role at a very young age, forfeiting lots of different college education, forfeiting music careers, forfeiting art careers, forfeiting a lot of whole different other careers to provide for their family because they're following what they their moral compass said to do with their FI hero with the SI trickster, I mean, an X-ray a critic. And so, I mean, there's no shortage of those stories, you know, of the ISFP stepping up as the oldest, um, oldest sibling, you know, and taking that role as the leader at a very, very young age, you know, and you're like, well, aren't they like background? Yeah, they are, you know, and so uh, that's, that's what makes them quite impressive about that, you know, they just embraced that ENTJ side of their mind, became that, you know, that leader they needed to be, um, and it's, it's quite amazing, um, I've, many ENTJs who just, take control of their families and just um, work their ass off, just pro- try to provide a better life than what they had. Um, you know, for, and many times they're not really appreciated for what they do because uh, I think ENTJs get taken advantage of a lot uh, and for granted in many ways because um, they have really big hearts and they're afraid of coming off as a bad person so you can kind of mess around with them and manipulate them a lot to get them to buy you things and stuff and um, it's it's a sad point you know and INTJs are the same way um, I see a lot of INTJs in the group who are kind of like running around they're being more of the doormats in the group and being taken advantage of and I you see INTJs in my personal life who were trying to hide trying to isolate themselves trying to gather energy and they couldn't because they were involved, you know, being Jehovah's Witness in, their, in the church, and people were like, oh, you're talented in a lot of different ways, let me use you up, you know, and that kind of happened, because that my child, you know, is very sensitive, and um, so, and I'm going to make this video less than 20 minutes, and but uh, it's, the thing about this quadra is you can't, I couldn't imagine a world without it, and Essentially, you can, I want to say every type is equal in their own right, but this quadrant by far is the most famous. You know, this is by far the most in the entertainment industry. You know, you have literally the President of the United States, who typically, for the most part, had no real political connection, no political experience whatsoever, but just for the fact of being able to steal the hearts and minds of half of the, half of the nation you know, to love him, to love his brand, to love everything about him, to vote for him, you know, and he's in the Oval Office. I don't think any other type could do that. Maybe an INTJ, maybe. Um, You see different people like AOC, she's a junior congresswoman, and she's already beloved by a large amount of people. She's also hated by a large amount of people, too, but she's in that quadrant, ESFP. You know, they're able to just steal the hearts and minds of people, and they have that ability. And so, you th- think of my life, I've been spending a long time uh, looking at different wonders around the world, and how many of those were, you know, created by ISFPs, you know, who engineered amazing art, you know, in Venice and things like that. And uh, it's something to think about. And so, think of C.S. Joseph, you know, maybe he didn't. Uh, point out so much on this video because he's already made a lot of other praises and you watch him typing famous people or whatever and how many of them are ISFPs and ESFPs. It's like over and over and over again and then an ENTJ pops up or an INTJ pops up. I mean you can argue ENTPs are quite common too but this is by far this quadrant is by far the most famous 
And so C.S. Joseph's talking about them all the time anyways. And so that's just my thoughts on that. I'm not going to ramble much more about this, but I uh, love you guys and keep it real.